Hi there, this is Jesse Reich, CEO and co-founder of Splinterlands.com, and I just kind of wanted to talk through what I call the state of Splinterlands. So um, every week that we do this, uh, I'm going to go give just a short background of what it is that the game does and why, why it's important that we do the things that we do, and then I'll get into uh, the actual game itself. So if you're already familiar with this, maybe I'll just skip ahead a couple minutes, but uh, for people that are new, Splinterlands itself is two things. It's a next generation game development studio, and it's also one of, if not the most popular blockchain based app in the world, as ranked by dappradar.com and State of the Dapps. Uh, we're usually in the top one, two, or three, often just sitting in the first position, but it rotates a little bit. Okay, so uh, we're a game development studio. We have um, six full timers, so there's two founders. Uh, two people in marketing and two people on the uh, development side. We have some contract, mobile developers, and a whole team of uh, contractors that we work with. So there's a, a bunch of people that, that are part of this. Uh, and we, we moved into the gaming market. We really wanted to go uh, help crypto expand. We believe in the economic freedom and the power that comes with using cryptocurrencies and storing everything on an immutable blockchain. Um, and we wanted that to grow and it's hard to envision, you know, it growing just because people can speculate on token prices. You gotta have something that's entertaining and be able to do. And gaming is just this massive market. Uh, and there's a lot of overlap between the, the people that are nerdy and really like all the different features of cryptocurrency. And there are people that are nerdy that really like all the like features of how cards and card dynamics play out. So we thought gaming was going to be this great, um, this great market for us, and it really has been. So 66% of the U.S. population over the age of 12 are gamers. There's 2.2 billion gamers worldwide, and uh, there's some hefty projections of where the blockchain gaming market will be just in short order uh, up in the billions of dollars. And there's a problem that we're trying to solve with all of this in that the time that players invest into these games yields zero value. So like you have this guy, he goes and he buys a $60 game, he, uh, he plays it for a month, he beats the game, uh, he's had a lot of fun, but at the end when he stops playing, there's there's no value left over there. You know, maybe you get a couple connections of, from internet friends or something, but uh, the assets that you've been storing literally have no value uh, and you can't like sell off the game. So. Um, you know, you get your entertainment value, but but that's about it. And by using blockchain in our game, we really have the ability to um, provide players with with actual real world value. And you used to have that, you know, in the physical games, you used to be able to own these physical cards. Uh, those cards would would provide you with like true ownership, and you could trade them in secondary markets, and you own something that that had value. Um, but they weren't very convenient, you know, you had to play when your brother was awake or you had to uh, go to the school, the store or school um, and earning was like not really a thing. So uh, with digital games, they got a lot more convenient in that uh, you, with an internet connection, you could really play anywhere and anytime. But the AAA game studios have done everything they can to prevent players from actually being able to monetize this stuff. So like if you go farm gold and you sell the gold, uh, they'll oftentimes attempt to ban your account, find you and, and ban you. And, and we don't like that. We really think that economic freedom and ownership and all of this is, is where we need to head. Uh, so we get the convenience of our digital games and that you can play anytime. You get the, the ownership qualities of the physical games and that you own tokens on the blockchain that you move around with your posting key. Your key is what unlocks all this. Um, so now you can buy, sell, trade it. And if you're ever done with our game, you can just cash out the whole thing uh, and the market will absorb it. And uh, finally, we unlock this new ability for everybody to earn. So you get to earn with every win. So what happens when we did that? Well, uh, here, here's we're going through some of these slides and, and there's some numbers that are a little bit more up to date, but what I have here on the left is decks by value. So this is public information. You go into Discord and you can pull this stuff up. On the left are the account names and then you can see how much value that, that it, those decks are worth. And this is remarkable to me because it, it means that um, in order to be a top 10 holder in this game, you have to own a minimum of $34,000 worth of cards. And that's that's just a ton. I, I, like, I, I'm shocked by how much that is. Um, but, but I think that goes to show that players are not looking at this just as entertainment. You know, they look at this as a rare collectible that they get to hold for their, for their life for as long as they want to hold it. Um, 
And then there's aspects like the rental market and you can rent these cards. I'm not going to get into that right now, but uh, you know, there's a lot here that suggests that this isn't just players having fun with this, but they're players that are um, wanting to old own limited edition collectibles. All right, so then we get into the market cap. So those are the top 10 decks, but if you total up the uh, all the cards out there, currently um, this is a Peak Monsters number. Peak Monsters it tallies this at 5.4 million for the list price. Um, and that gets broken down by your, your alpha packs and your uh, beta untamed reward and promo. We sell packs at two bucks. They're, they're buck 70 in bulk. Uh, the alphas are around 1.6 million. The betas are worth 1.6 million. Uh, what's fun about the alphas is that, uh, you know, we only sold 300,000 packs. So at most we could have sold them for $600,000, but you can see that they're worth 1.64. So um, that's pretty fun for just two years. Uh, then you have these untamed packs. That's our current edition. Uh, reward packs, that's my favorite story in that players, we give them to the players for free, and this is what they themselves value those cards at. Um, so I think that, to me, is the biggest delta that's possible of, you know, here's this free thing, and the players put it up over half a million dollars. Uh, and then there's promo cards. Those are those are kind of rare, unique things that we do to go help entice new markets and new groups to, to come on board. Uh, we have when we sell the pack tokens, we sell them as tokens, not just packs immediately. So players will uh, buy packs and hold them. Um, the alphas are currently sitting around 880. Although I just was told the story of a guy that sold them for literally twenty dollars per pack. So um, that that sounds really healthy to me. I don't know what the current the absolute current price is, uh, but the betas too. Betas are up here at three bucks and six cents a pack. Again, in bulk, we really sold them for a buck seventy. So uh, I feel like there's a healthy secondary market for these things, especially after we sell out of them. You know, once we sell out of them, then uh, players know there's never going to be any more of these packs minted, and uh, they try to get them. Okay, so here's the current state of the the market. So this is from uh, from the game. There's been today in the last 24 hours, there's been roughly $3,200 of sales, almost 10,000 cards sold. So, you know, roughly 30 cent per card. So we're probably looking at, you know, an average of a rare, maybe a, a cheap epic. Um, but, you know, Jonin Zaku is up there at 17 bucks. I feel like that's pretty strong. Uh, also, just in terms of like how much people like it, you know, when we released Yodin, Yodin's number of cards out there and mimosas were roughly similar. So there are, you know, 750 or so. It's since gone up as more people have opened packs. But uh, people have really been combining Yodin. Uh, that seems to be a super popular card, giving everybody on the red team blast. Uh, it seems like that that's a hit. So you can see, um, you know, right now there's 628 that exist in the world and 47 are currently on the market. And that's that's improved over Mimosa, who's been here a little bit longer, but maybe we're not seeing people playing as much of the, the death team. I'm not quite sure what that is, but certainly people dug Mimosa too. Uh, and the gold foil cards are actually doing pretty well. Uh, Yoden Zaku in particular, we're now seeing the lowest list price at 525. That is a card that you can find in a $2 pack. Uh, we're seeing Mimosa trade up there at 245 or 249 and I'm happy to see some of the other legendaries like they were all sitting there kind of at these like scale doctor prices or diamond dragon prices sort of in that $40 range so I'm pretty stoked to see some of these cards start getting back up into the 60 80 90 dollar range um, I think that's impacting the overall uh, value of, of ju not just the uh, untamed edition but we're seeing some interest in the uh, in these gold foils and I think that's pushing up some of the the values overall and one example of that is the the alpha gold foils um, you you can't find these I mean un unless you have thousands of dollars um, all of the cheap gold foil alphas seem to have been removed from the market uh, I think I think uh, gold matters was a big part of doing that but uh, yeah now now good luck finding these things um, next up, it's starting to look like the, the Epics might be a good deal compared to the Alpha Gold Foils, but, you know, who knows what the market will do, but um, I don't know. It's exciting to see that the the Alpha prices have, have risen for these uh, Gold Foil cards uh, pretty, pretty heavily. So how is the uh, overall market cap doing? Well, the all-time high was at 4.7 million. We're sitting at 4.2. 
we had um, we we went under we went under 3.5 briefly so it seems like the just from looking at the chart I would say the market maybe got a little bit overheated uh, back in December it cooled off a little bit uh, a little bit of consolidation and now it's been going back up so we're not quite yet back to, to all-time highs but it seems like um, it seems like just from what I'm seeing it looks like the players are accumulating again so um, it's been fun to watch my own personal collection value start rising again. Uh, I had been under, um, I'd been under 90,000 in my uh, Smelp account for a, a little bit and it's back over, I think it's like 107. So that price rise has been, you know, like, oh, I don't know, like a $27,000 swing. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so um, here there's a command in the Discord. You can go type in uh, top 10 and then here's top 10 packs. So you can see um, to go make it, if you wanna be the top 10 purchaser of card packs, you will have to have bought 11,296 uh, packs. I mean, that's just, that's just a ton of these things. Okay, so then I wanna go see the most valuable decks. So this is actually today's number, whereas my previous chart was a little bit off, but uh, welcome Neoxian. Neoxian is new to the list. He kicked off Matt Clark there. Um, but yeah, we're still sitting at a minimum of 34,000. There's a little bit of jockeying. It looks like Smalp overtook the uh, 6969 account. So maybe Jay is selling um, some of that, his cards off of that account. Although the uh, TH Moon up there at the top is still looking pretty strong. All right, so then most cards in the deck. So uh, kind of funky. I see some people that I, I just wasn't expecting to see here. Jillian uh, is here, Car Crash Beaming, ABK159, I don't know. Plato owns a ton of these things. Uh, but these are these could all just be level one cards. So I imagine that there's a lot of these cards that are not currently combined uh, that are being held by these different accounts, but that's sort of interesting. You gotta own 24,000 and almost 700 cards if you wanna be in the, uh, in the top 10 holder of cards. And then finally the, um, so this is, this is cards. Uh, this is, this is indicating sort of uh, who has the most cards. And then this is total BCX. So if you're not aware of BCX, this is after you've combined them. If you take two level one cards and you combine them, then you get to two BCX. So it's uh, it doesn't differentiate between legendaries or commons. So this is just, you know, how many different level one cards do you own even after you've uh, combined them? So uh, again, some, some really healthy teams in there getting up into the multiple hundreds of thousands. Um, but you gotta you gotta own basically you know ninety thousand cards uh, total if you want to go make it into the top ten. So there's a lot of guys that are uh, or a lot of people that are holding these. Okay, so I I pulled up some numbers previously, um, but th these are today's. This is as of uh, today, which is May twenty seventh. Um, so the current market cap according to Peak Monsters using their total. Uh, list price is five million and five hundred and twenty-four thousand uh, dollars, and where that comes from, the alphas are one point seven million, the betas are one point six six million, um, the uh, the promos are almost a million. They're at nine hundred twenty-two thousand. The reward cards are sitting there at six hundred thirty-eight thousand, and then the uh, the untamed cards that are around six hundred thousand. So that's the breakdown for the the different editions based off of today's absolute prices. Um, this chart I love. This chart is the decimation, and it just sort of looks at how are where, where are the cards in their life cycle and their additions, and and how many are remaining. Um, I think I think the coolest one to me is the alpha because that's been around the longest. But you can see uh, there are three hundred thousand uh, card packs that we sold. Each one had five cards in it, so that's a total of one point five million. So when this graph starts, uh, they were already down to 500,000. So we've seen 66% of them get condensed, but we're actually under 300,000 of them. Uh, we're sitting here, uh, my mic is in the way, we're sitting here at 297,000, and that means that we are under, uh, more than 80% of the alpha cards have been condensed. So uh, that to me is a really exciting story. You know, like Bitcoin will only have 21 million minus all the, the Bitcoin that have been lost and uh, computers thrown out and whatnot. Um, but with the alphas, you know, we max out at 1.5 million cards and we have since shrunk down to 
under 300,000. And that's in, I don't know, maybe 16 months or so, 18 months. Uh, so that's, that's pretty sweet to me. Uh, and you can see the same sort of thing with the betas. It looks like the betas capped at their max was 992,000, so just under a million. Uh, with a total max cap of 4.5 million cards, that's where that's at. And yet we are, our current, our current number is 800,000. So excuse me for a second while I do some calculator math. But if I take, um, uh, what is it, 800, where's my beta? Uh, 819,000 and we divide that by 4.5 million uh, then only 18% of those cards remain um, the rest of them have been squished into uh, more powerful cards so um, that's really that's really good I mean that's even um, that's up there with the alpha series and eventually we'll start seeing that with some of these other ones so the rewards, the rewards have tapered some. You can see um, somewhere in here we did the uh, the switch to that we're not printing as many rewards cards, and now you're getting deck deck straight uh, instead. So you can see that we are tapering the number of reward cards that are out in the in the world. Um, and then for the uh, what's the blue one is the promo. So. Um, there are, there are a few more promos that are out there. I guess this is really the half lane that, that kicked in. Um, so that's that's where some of that rises from. And then lastly, here's our Untamed. So you can see Untamed has been coming up. Um, so we're the the max so far is 725,000. Current there's 675,000. You know, we still have a lot of packs left to go. There's almost a million packs left. Maybe it's closer to 900,000 or so by now, but, um, you know, this is something that I'll keep an eye on. I, I don't know how high up that'll go, but I mean, to me, the, the secret of the, uh, the economics of this game is this, uh, descending line, you know, you, it goes up, you, you kind of hit a, a max and then all the cards can only shrink. And that's basically after the packs have sold out. And that to me drives a lot of the, uh, the economics around here. Okay, what else do we have? So this is battles per day. Um, so the, the next season is over in a couple days, and then a couple days after that, I'll go do the uh, the next one of these. But we, we capped out just around, just uh, just shy of 80,000 at the end of last season, and we'll see what comes up next. But, you know, th this is actually uh, a pretty sweet story. You know, uh, there's 15,000 here. There's more than 75,000 there. So we've seen a 5x increase in the number of games played. All right, so, but how does that correlate with players? Well, for players, we had, uh, at the end of last season, over 4,500 uh, active accounts playing. At the low point, we had something like just under 1,500. So that is a tripling over the, the course of the year, right? Because this is, this is in May of last year. This is May currently, or the end of May. I want to track it at the end of this coming season, but... Uh, I think we will have more than tripled the, the number of accounts playing over the course of the last year. So that sounds that sounds pretty awesome to me. Uh, and then the other piece that I really like is that, you know, you can see when the seasons end because you see all these accounts come in to start trading. Um, some are there to go sell their cards. Some are there to go try to pick up the dump. Um, but this to me, again, this this looks pretty healthy. So. Um, when you get to accounts transacting to maybe, maybe here we're only, uh, doubling or so, but in a year that that's a, that's strong growth across all these, anywhere from a two X to five X growth in terms of like player interaction. And that's, that's the metric that I keep in my head more than any others. I uh, got to get more players in the game. Um, so one of the things, I, I guess this slide slipped in here, but um, over time we'll actually add more games. We'll add expansions to what we're doing. We're going to go add more games. Um, we might white label some of what we're doing, so uh, keep that in mind. And the, the games can be different types. You might still own the card, but now instead of just being a card, it might represent something else like a 3D object in one of these other games. And that's the, uh, the rock there. So let's talk a little bit about the product roadmap and where we are in that. Um, I don't want to go too detailed in this. I'd rather I'd rather let Matt uh, sort of lead that. But just just for the, just for some broad categories, and I don't want to put in much description here. But 
Uh, what are we doing right now? Well, we're working on the, act, the Anytime Tournament updates. So that got rolled out. Uh, we're super happy with the rollout. I know that players were sort of disappointed in, in some of the experience. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna def definitely like tweak some things, but just um, you know, from a functionality standpoint, it didn't break the game. Things are um, the tournaments are progressing. It's like a whole new system, and and yes, it has some bugs, like a lot of like brand new software often does. But as a starting point, I'm so excited for this. It's doing it's doing awesome. Um, yes, the the how the prize pools are distributed and how the rounds work and and fairness and accounts that don't play play many battles, all that stuff needs to be worked out. But from the fundamental level, that 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 piece of software is doing beautifully. Okay, next up, mobile app development. Um, so we are currently working on getting not just the mobile site, which we've had for a little bit, but uh, now that we've added the the store piece into that, we're really we're really trying to get this thing launched on iOS and Android. Not all of that is in our hands, of course, because we're a crypto based app and we have to figure out what the app stores are going to do with us. But um, you know, we have a uh, third party team of mobile app developers that we work with, and we're working on getting this actually launched as the iOS and Android. Um, as soon as the uh, the sort of V2 of the tournaments get put up and, and we can go give that some time for testing, uh, we're, we're going to switch back to, to working on the league leaderboards and the deck floors. Um, I know that that's a, a major concern. Uh, a lot of that revolves around fairness in the game um, and, just, and just better feeling of accomplishment, of doing well. So uh, for those two reasons, that, that, that is the, to me, that's sort of the next on deck. Um, and it should be happening uh, here in the short order. In terms of the horizon, one of the big categories of things that are here to come, uh, we're going to have the guild tournaments, we'll have the land sale, and we have boss fights. And uh, those are sort of the next big projects, and um, we'll be developing that over the, the course of the remainder of 2020 here. So that's what I wanted to share. Um, Anyways, if you guys have questions, you're welcome to contact me. I live in Discord. Uh, I'm aggroed in there, and the, you guys can find us at discord.splinterlands.com. Uh, if you have questions, comments, or want to see other things, or want me to, to add other slides or stuff to this discussion, I'm happy to do it. Um, and hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully you can... I, I want to I try to keep providing this level of insight into, into what we're doing, what I'm seeing, the things that I'm excited about, what we're rolling out, and uh, give you a sense of that. And maybe maybe in the not too distant future we'll show some of the uh, some of the artwork for the land that's coming and uh, the new mystery potion card that that will be here soon. So lots of good stuff. And um, I don't know. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for uh, thanks for viewing. Thanks for playing. Thanks for buying cards. And uh, here's hoping that we collectively help push this game into the mainstream and really be the the first crypto app to make it there. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.